Hello everybody and welcome to this, my first of three videos on the Canon EOS Rebel T1i, a, um, a venerable camera. I remember um, I used to work a job in marketing back in San Francisco when we lived in that area. This is uh, 2011 to 2012 and this was the camera that they had me, not this specific one, but this model camera was the one that they had me use to go take photos of the buildings and it was the camera that, uh, that 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 taught me that I was not a huge fan of Canon kit zoom lenses but this camera itself is plenty capable and um, we're gonna take a look at it in these videos so that you know how to do everything you can do with this camera the Canon EOS Rebel T1i was called the 500D outside of the US except in uh, Japan where it was called the KISS X it is an interchangeable lens APS-C format DSLR. What that means is you can take the lenses off and put a different one on at any time when you're not taking a photo, no issue. Digital SLR means that it has a digital sensor and that you have a single lens. The light travels through the, through the lens to the mirror that we just saw up to a penta mirror. I think this camera has a penta mirror system up here and uh, then to your eyepiece, and you see exactly what the lens is going to see right up until the moment that you take the photo. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna leave this lens off because it'll be a little bit easier to see the camera. This has an APS-C format 15.1 megapixel CMOS sensor. APS-C being the size of the sensor, 15.1 megapixels being the resolution. It has a 35 zone meter, meaning that if you were looking at this scene through the viewfinder, the camera would divide it into 35 zones that it would use to calculate proper exposure settings. It has shutter speeds as fast as 1 4,000th, going out to 30 seconds and bulb with a 3.4 frame per second burst speed. The viewfinder has a 0.87x magnification rate and 95% frame coverage. Now what that means is that the magnification in here is eight, the what you will see is 87% of the size of what will be on the image sensor. Being an APS-C sensor, that's actually kind of small and indicates that this camera is really intended to be used for autofocus use because manual focusing in the viewfinder is gonna be a bit tricky. The 95% frame coverage means that if what you are seeing right now is what would be on your image sensor, then about 2.5% on each side and 2.5% on the top and bottom would be on the sensor but not in your viewfinder. And that means you can crop just a little bit when it comes time to, uh, to edit your photos and post. The ISO range is 100 to 12,800 as well as auto. And the flash sync on this is 1 200th of a second. It can also record 1080p video, but only at 20 frames per second, which quite frankly is kind of choppy and even was a little bit choppy back when this camera was new. So to that end, if you have this camera, one of the things that I would recommend is think of this as a stills only camera and don't really use it for video. The target market for the T1i was the entry-level user. And we know that because the Rebel, the KISS badge, and the three-digit the three digit camera numbering system for Canon are the entry-level cameras. It was made by Canon in Japan only in 2009. It was preceded by the KISS XSI, I'm sorry, the Rebel XSI, the KISS X2, or the four, and the 450D, all the same camera. And it was followed by the Rebel T2i, which looks almost identical to right here. You can see pretty much exactly the same camera. A little bit of a difference on some of the body styling. And the Rebel T2i was also called the KISS X4 and the 550D. If you have your Rebel T1i, we're going to go over what all of the things on the camera are. In the second video, we'll go over what all of them do. And in the third video, we're going to go into the menu screen and, and then custom functions and go over every menu item and every custom function and explain 
what they are, and how they affect your photography. But for now, starting here on the top, these silver bars are your strap lugs. You would connect your camera strap to these silver bars so you can hang this around your neck. This is your sensor plane indicator so that if you're doing microscopy, you can take measurements off of this to know how much magnification you have. Pop-up flash, flash hot shoe. This is your mode dial index, mode dial. The index tells you which mode you are set to. On off switch, markers for your asterisk button and autofocus point selection button. ISO selection, command wheel, shutter release button, on the front of the camera, we have this IR port, which is for using an infrared remote control. Autofocus assist light. This will blink when you're using autofocus in lighting, which is too dim for the autofocus to focus on its own. Lens mount. EF index, that's the red dot. EFS, that's the uh, white square mounting index. Lens locking pin. Lens release. Badge. EOS. Canon, and that is your microphone for your video. So, if you have an EF lens, we'll see this in video too, red dot, red dot. If you have an EFS lens, white square, white square. On the camera's back, we have a bunch of different stuff. Menu button, this is the display button, viewfinder, diopter adjuster dial right here, IP sensors, LCD screen here, asterisk button, autofocus point selection button, aperture value compensation button. We'll see how to use that in video too. This is your print button, white balance, drive mode, autofocus mode, picture style button, set button, playback, delete, your access lamp indicating that the SD card is being written to, and a speaker for when you play back videos. On this side of the camera, we have a couple of things underneath this rubber cover. Here is a remote control port. Looks like a headphone jack, but it's a little bit smaller. Then underneath that, we have an audio-visual di digital out port. I think that is a micro USB. It looks like it. I couldn't tell you if that's a one or a two USB, but that's going to be for digital uh, audio video, digital audio video out. Over here you have an HDMI port. On this side of the camera there's not a whole lot. Just push this door out to get into your SD card port right here. On the camera's bottom we have the tripod socket right here. This is where you would attach your tripod or quick release plate. Canon, serial number, registration info. This is your battery chamber. Push the battery chamber release toward the front of the camera you can lift up the battery chamber and we'll see how to change the battery and talk about that in video two. I do have some tips for you on how to get the most out of this camera when you use it. The first one is to use EFS lenses like this is a 24 millimeter 28 right here. This was a pretty inexpensive lens by brand new lens standards. EFS lenses work really well on these. They're designed to work well on them and they tend to be a little bit less expensive because they're a little bit easier to engineer and use smaller optics and uh, less expensive motors to operate. EF lenses can get very expensive. The next thing is that, like I said earlier, think of this as a stills only camera. 20 frames per second at 1080p is going to be very choppy for your video. It's honestly, it's gonna look kind of like a GIF that's being played over a very slow internet connection. So I really don't recommend this as a camera to be used for videos. I do have some things that you should not do with your camera. The first one is going to be don't try to touch the, don't touch the mirror, especially with your fingers. Your finger oils can tarnish the mirror, which can affect your ability to focus and meter accurately. Don't touch the shutter, which is behind the mirror, because you can brick the shutter quite easily that way. Don't leave your camera or lenses in your car. Heat and cold can really damage your camera, not just the lubricating oils getting to places they shouldn't be and mucking up the works, but extreme heat and extreme cold can be very hard on plastic housings for camera bodies. And these, uh, the Rebel series being an, an entry-level camera, do have a large amount of plastic on and in them. 
Also, they're good targets for thieves, cameras that is. And so even if you just pop into a store to run a quick errand with your camera on the seat, you can come out to a broken window and no camera. Don't leave your camera in a bag, a plastic bag or box, because plastic is moisture permeable, and once moisture gets in, it will congregate on your optics, either in your viewfinder system or your lens, and that can create fungus, which will impair your camera's ability to take good photos. Do not let your Rebel T1i get wet. It's not weather sealed, and water could absolutely destroy the circuitry. And the last thing is to remember that your Canon EOS Rebel T1i is a precision tool that should be handled with care and respect. As long as you take care of your camera, your camera will take care of you. So that's everything for video one. In video two, we'll talk about how to do everything on this camera. And in video three, we'll go into the menu system and talk about how every menu item affects your camera's setup and operation. See you in those videos.